Praise Lord. Praise Lord. I'll be reading Galatians chapter 3, the 26th through the 29th verse. And it reads thus, For ye are all the children of God, by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jews nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all, I said all one, in Christ Jesus. And if, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. God's word has been truly blessed. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus once again, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be in the house of worship one more time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the people that's gathered here in this tabernacle, Lord Jesus. Thank you for ones that's looking at Facebook and Zoom. Bless everyone in the sound of my weak voice. Continue to bless the ones that that was going through what they went through in Texas, Lord Jesus. Thank you for my daughter that survived what went through last week. Not only through Texas, but throughout this world, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I know that you are here. Your presence is here, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything, Lord Jesus. And thank you for our preacher. They're gonna stand at the sacred desk this morning, Lord Jesus. So bless us right now. We shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. In Jesus' name, we praise and give you thanks. And amen. Welcome to our church, First Park Baptist Church. A legacy of God's grace for over 200 years. Happy birthday wishes to Mario Williams. March 3rd, and Dorothy Jennings, March 5th. May the two birthday. Also today is Holly's birthday, March 28th. So let's switch Dorothy and Mario on the organ a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Save the date. March 15th through March 21st, Connie Nia Woman uh, Peace Ministries present Women's Conference 2021 by dynamic uh, speakers for nights via Zoom. March 21st, worship service, more information to follow. Amber meeting today at February 28th at 2 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, Angela King will be coming up in a few minutes to emphasize uh, this Zoom meeting. It's very important. Bible studies Thursday, March 4th, 2021, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Our daily prayer at 6 p.m. Join us and experience more every evening except holidays. Uh, the dial is 848-220-3300. ASIP code is 1523848. Amen. And that's, and also while I'm standing here, is any visitors this morning? Any visitors this morning? 
Amen. I guess we all home. So we're going to ask um, Angela um, King to emphasis on our important um, Zoom meeting. Angela. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. So, sound happier than that to see me. <laughs> Good morning, family. Um, so, as Reverend Burton um, announced, as the announce announcements indicate, we have a 2 p.m. Uh, annual church meeting today. The meeting I will, my, if my eyes allow, I will be logging on at 1.50 to begin taking attendance. The meeting will begin promptly at 2 p.m. Promptly at 2 p.m. If I am the only one there, I will begin the meeting. And so when you uh, log on, I will be speaking to myself, as it were. Um, Akia did provide us with everything that we need uh, for this meeting, I will once again emphasize there will be no time to read through anything that has already been distributed. Please read your materials and come with your questions, corrections, answers, if so, if, if so needed. Again, please read your materials, read your minutes, because we will only be taking questions and corrections for the minutes, read the information in your annual report, because we will only be taking questions. The, the, minist the ministries which submitted annual reports will not be reading the annual report for you. Please read your annual reports. So when you come on the meeting call, you're ready to go. Um, please pick up your annual report when you are leaving today at the uh, temperature slash usher station. Uh, just a reminder, official board members, with everything going on, I forgot to send out your meeting announcement. We will be having a meeting tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. as usual. It will be very, very short. So please, official board members, uh, govern yourselves accordingly to come to the official board meeting tomorrow evening. Again, members, we would love, love, love to see you on our meeting, on the, on the meeting. There is a lot to share. There's a lot to go through. And we don't want you to miss anything. So please, govern yourselves accordingly and be online by 2 p.m. Thank you so much. See you later. Akia sent that information out. It's all in the emails. Yes. Check your news you can use. Check your regular email. All the information is there. Thank you so much, Akia. Uh, thank you, Sister King. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to worship our God. It's Fourth Sunday, and it's the men's time to sing Zion songs. The men's. God bless.
morning, church. As you see, this is uh, February, Black History Month, as we uh, give tribute and homage to those who went before us, who uh, had to deal with the op oppressions and prejudice so that we might not have to. I just want to read a small part of a, a scripture. I'm going to read from Psalms 35. It's probably verses 1 through 3. It says, Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me, and fight against those who fight against me. Take hold a buckling shield and rise up for my help. Draw also the spear and the battle axe to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation.
you want the Lord to walk with you. Yes. While I'm on this pilgrim journey, I want the Lord to walk with me. Did the Lord change your life? Yes. Did the Lord really change your life? I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. The angels in the heaven done sign my name. Oh, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Sign my name. Oh, if you don't believe I've been redeemed. The angels in heaven sign my name. Just follow me down to the Jordan stream. The angels in heaven sign my name. Oh, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. You know that I. Angels in heaven sign my name. Oh, I stepped in the water and the water was cold. The angels in heaven sign my name. It shook my body, but not my soul. The angels in heaven sign my name. Oh, I know I've been changed. I Sign oh, my when I get to heaven, gonna sing and shout. The angels in heaven and sign my name. And nobody there's gonna turn me out. The angels in heaven and sign my oh, name. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. You know that I. Oh. 
on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. Oh, ain't gonna let segregation turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let segregation turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking. I'm marching up to freedom land. Oh, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Turn me around. Turn me around. Turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking. Keep on a talking. Marching up to freedom land. Oh, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Keep on a walking, keep on a talking, 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 marching up the freedom land. Join us for our congregational hymn. Please stand. We shall overcome.
we shall overcome someday. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Let us all pray together as our own deacon Bill Thomas will lead us in a word of prayer. So deacon Thomas. morning church it's prayer time uh, we're going to pray now to the great I am to our father who has been charged of all things dear father God we prayed this morning that we thank you for the weather we thank you for the wind the air being able to get up today and to come into the church and to be with one another and to show love do the exact things that you've told us to do, Lord. We have a special prayer for, Lord, we especially pray for our brother Marvin. He went to JFK Hospital this morning. Uh, he was feeling a little ill. We ask that God gives him the strength. And we ask that the Lord give him the sense of peace to know that he's in charge and all things will work out for the good. We also pray for our Reverend Mears, who today, Lord, she just started being able to take solid food. Reverend Mears, Lord, as you know, is one of your best soldiers. Her faith is unexplainable by someone by, like me. We know that she is, she know, we know that she will, and we know that she do find peace in you, Lord. She has demonstrated it year after year. Thank you, Lord, for the state of this country right now, where there's more of a peace or more of a calm. We went through a pandemic and we went through some changes. Just like the storm, we know you're there, Lord, and you're there with us all along. It's a time now where we can see that we're coming out and you have been there with us all this time. We pray for the young people in this country, Lord, for finally, for you finally having them to open up their eyes, to see what's been going on, to make a difference. For you said a child shall lead, and we are so thankful and grateful for that. We pray for all the blessings that you have given us. We thank you especially for at this time where we could come out and show love and see one another talk to one another, where there's a sense of ease. And we pray for those who are still, could I say, like still at home. We ask that you give them faith, Lord. Expand, let their faith grow. Let them realize that you are in charge. There's certain things we all have to do, and we know that we have to use our common sense, but we don't have to have any fear. For you did not create us for fear. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Our Father, whom art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And we praise your holy name forever and ever. And let the church say, Amen. Thank you, um, Deacon Thomas, for that prayer. It's happy time for God loves our cheerful believer. We may give online via timely, an app, 
and it's time to give as the Lord has truly, truly, truly has blessed you. Our trustees coming. my place. Give me one second. This has come up. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. It says, each of you should give as you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. First Park, are we cheerful this morning? Amen. 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 God loves when we give cheerfully. It displays to him that you're growing your spiritual growth and your generosity. In times like this, we have a tendency as human beings to hold on to everything that we have because we don't know what's happening around us. We're not sure if we have a job. We're not sure with what's happening. But God says, give and I will provide for you. And when he says give, he says give cheerfully. Because if you're gonna bring it up here and put it in the basket and grumble about it, he doesn't want it. Keep it. But come cheerfully, thanking him that he will provide for your every need. Father God, we thank you that you put this heart of giving in us. Thank you, Lord. Those of you who are watching online, you can give through our Tithely app. You can mail a check. But we would love to see you here in the sanctuary with us so we can watch you climb up to the basket and put your gifts in that basket. And in all of that, we're giving God the glory and we're thanking him. Ushers, would you please part of the uh, Ushers, please leave the folks up to the front. <laughs> to God be the glory. that you would show in their lives and we give you all the glory for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
today is February 28th, last day of um, Black history. Um, at this time, we won't have the Black history moment. Well, I have a Black history moment. All right. My Black history moment is, we were discussing it earlier during, we were here early in the morning, let's say that way. And we were talking about the impression that Mario had and I had many years back when we spoke to someone who was in their 90s. And we spoke about how we were so amazed at how they took the things that we take for granted as very valuable. Uh, one of the guys I was talking to, his name was Jose, something like that. He had a, and he said, I could go where I want to go. I said, yeah. And he said, and I could eat where I want to eat. Now, we go where we want to go and eat what we want to eat, and we think that's not, nothing. But for a black history moment, that's very important. That was something that they couldn't do. They couldn't go out. They couldn't go eat. They couldn't do what they want. They couldn't say what they want. They couldn't be where they wanted to be. And, my, and we're very thankful today to be able to do these things, which is our black history. Um, to see the revolution that's... Uh, I say revolution, check that out. Uh, the revolution of what's going on now, where it all started by someone on a football field taking a knee. We've been there, but now it's coming back again. That's a black history moment. To be aware of who you are, how you got here, and what's going on, and the rights that you have to be a human being. And that's my black history moment. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Before the men will sing our um, sermon, sermonette song, we have a preacher that has been here many, many times. His name is Dr. Brian Darnell Rawls, Sr. Dr. Rawls is a graduate of Nyack College in Nyack, New York where he received his bachelor degree, degree in interdisciplinary um, studies, it's hard to pronounce, in Bible and social science. He was selected from the National Pool of Candidates to receive, to be awarded the National Urban Fellowship, where he received his master's degree in public administration from the Bernard, Bernard uh, uh, Barack uh, College, Baruch College in Manhattan. He completed a clinical um, pastoral education unit through the Robert Woods Johnson University Hospital Ch Chaplain Lee um, Program and Dr. Uh, Brian earned his Master of the Divinity, and most recently his Doctor of Ministry degree from New York, New, York, um, New Brunswick <coughs> Theological Seminary. Reverend Wall's career profile in the nonviolent nonprofit realism, including his role as the former director of the Newark. Youth One Stop Career Center Office of the Mayor slash Newark Works of his work as a chairman of the Mayor, Mayor's Commission of the Homeless for the City of Newark. <clears throat> Dr. Wall springs from the Walls family, a tradition of singers, composers, church planters, and ministries in the city of Newark. He is happily married to his beautiful wife, Elisa, and have three children, Gerard, Lindsay, and Brian Jr. So after the songs from our mail course, hear ye him, Dr. Brian Rawls, amen.
thought I had retired this song. I keep trying to put it in, in a way, and people keep asking me to sing this song, but we're going to do the best. This is unexpected. We had prepared another song, but I'm going to do my best. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Help me out, fella. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Showers a blessing. This is the promise, the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing. This is the promise, the promise of God. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. shall be showers a blessing this is the promise the promise of God there shall be seasons refreshing this is the promise the promise of God Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain.
morning. Wonderful selections. And they brought us into mind of the great struggles that we've gone through as African Americans in this country. And uh, those wonderful songs resonate with the struggle 
But thanks be to God, it was the struggle then that brought us to where we are right now. Can we give God praise for that? We're celebrating black history. We're not mourning black history. We're celebrating black history for the great things that God has done through his people down through time. We thank God for being here once again. That is our third time here at First Park Baptist Church. And I am no less uh, amazed and uh, really fascinated by the beauty of this beautiful edifice and the hospitality of God's great people here at First Park. Can you give yourselves a hand this morning? We give honor to God who is the head of our lives. We thank God for all who are here today and those who may be joining us by way of the Facebook platform. Uh, it is still God's, uh, God's joy that we not forsake the assembling of ourselves, whether it's by that platform or here in person. So we thank God for the ability to bridge space and time, even through the medium of Facebook Live. Thanks be to God. During this pandemic, it has become necessary for us to use non-traditional means to keep the fire burning. And I thank God for Zoom and Facebook and all those other wonderful vehicles that allow us to do what we are doing. We thank God for the musicians here. Let's give God praise for the musicians. Amen. Giving honor to the uh, legacy of uh, Pastor Rufus McClendon. And I will do that uh, because it is definitely due. Honor is due. And we give it up today for his memory and his legacy that still lives on here at First Park uh, Baptist Church. We thank God for his first lady, his wife, who is still with us this morning. And we are grateful to God that she's in our midst. Maybe that's as shiny as ever. And smiling, it's a beautiful thing, a testimony to God's keeping power, even through the rough, not only is it a pandemic that we have to deal with, but incalculable losses, one after the other, that we have to endure. But thanks be to God, we're still standing. Give God praise if you're still standing today. Amen. Uh, to Deacon Thomas, uh, to uh, Deacon Penny, uh, I believe it's Minister Burton. Reverend Burton, Reverend Burton, Deacon Wilbon, and to Deacon Lawson in his absence. We give God thanks and praise for him and for Minister Darden who had to leave out of the door. We thank God for her presence as well. And for all of you, my wife is with me today. Thanks be to God. Amen, my son, my namesake Brian is with me today. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I have to steal this moment my son, Brian, was recently honored by Middlesex County as an unsung hero for his tireless work in community service. And I thank God that from my very home, this young Renaissance man has been spawned and nurtured. And I'm blessed to know you, son. Amen. Is it, is it all right to have your son as a hero? <laughs> and for my father-in-law, Deacon Ellis Clark is with us this morning. And I am so very blessed to have them in the midst. There's a song that's on my heart, just a little piece of it. May, may I sing it? If you can, sing with me. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lives. All of my fear is gone because I know who holds my future and life is worth the living just because Jesus lives because he Lives, I can face tomorrow because Jesus lives. All fear is gone because I know, I know, I know He holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives, because Jesus.
Jesus lives, I can face tomorrow because Jesus lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds my future and life is worth the living just because Jesus lives. Come on, give God some praise this morning. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow because Jesus lives. All fear is gone because I know, oh, oh, he holds my future. Live. Come on and give him some praise this morning because he lives. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord is with joy, God's joy, heaven's joy, and grace multiplied to you that I stand from this sacred desk. I do not take it for granted. It is the grace of God that enables all of us to do what we do. And so I depend on his grace. I depend on his mercy. I depend on his power even to deliver this morning. If you will, before we even get into the look at the text, let me say in the spirit of Black History Month, there are so many names to name in honor of Black History Month. And Black History did not start in the Americas. Oh, it, it's, it, it's long, long preceded by many great and wonderful accomplishments throughout not just the continent of Africa, but the entire world. We do not have enough time. 28 days would fail us to be able to talk about all of the exploits of Africans and black folks throughout all time. So we'll just give God thanks and praise for the wonderful achievements of black people everywhere. Thanks be to God for it. And if I cannot name them all, I can name something this morning that I believe is the undercurrent that has kept us together. We've gone through slavery, brutalities of the middle passage, uh, chattel racist slavery in America, uh, all of those horrible things, discrimination, racism institutionalized. Even to this day, we see the effects of it. But what is it that kept us throughout all of this time? Ladies and gentlemen, it's called hope. Hope. Even under the worst conditions, we have been the most indomitable people on the planet. And I thank God for hope. They may call it hype. No, it's not hype. It's hope. Hope is something that does not die even under strict and harsh conditions. Hope soars even in the lowest of positions in the earth. And I thank God today. And I really want to emphasize hope today. I want that to be impressed firmly in your spirits today that if we have nothing, let us have hope. Let us have hope. I'd like to invite your attention to the gospel according to St. John, uh, chapter 6. John is an incredible book. I love it. Uh, so full of signs and images. Uh, I get great joy from preaching from this book. John, chapter 6, and we'll read uh, a few verses, and I'll try to be speedy in the reading. Uh, don't mean to rhyme, but I won't, won't speed in the read today. Uh, John chapter 6, verse number 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles that he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. It was coming. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread so that all these can eat? And this he said to test him, for he knew what he was about to do. 
Philip answered him and said, 200 a year's salary of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have even a little. One of his disciples, Simon, uh, Peter's brother Andrew said to him, there's a boy here with five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are these among so many people? And Jesus said, make the men to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in a number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed these to the disciples, to them that were sitting down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they wanted to eat. When they were full, he said to his disciples, gather up the leftovers that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets full of leftovers of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Amen. Can we pray? Father, we thank you for your word because your word is already powerful. We ask that you anoint these words as they testify to its greatness. Make the words powerful, the sermon irresistible, and the anointing greater than before. These things we beg in the name of he who lied down in the grave and rose triumphant on the third day. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let God's people say Amen. Today, we want to talk to you from the subject. You may be seated. Set up for the overflow. Set up for the overflow. In these times, uh, overflow has a real resonance with us because in many ways, we are operating on fumes. Emotionally, we may be drained from the incalculable losses and the consequential losses from COVID, right? Uh, so many things that were happening even before COVID, so many things were assaulted within our bodies and the world around us, lacking physically, lacking resources. It's good to know that God is setting us up for an overflow, more than enough. He's that kind of God to do more than enough. The Gospel of John is an interesting book because the writer John uh, gives us a wondrous view of Jesus Christ. You hear about many miraculous signs and wonders in this text. And in this gospel, again, the miracles that are performed here are seen as signs. Signs. Signs point to things that are beyond themselves. Yeah, signs point to things that are beyond themselves. Case in point, when I'm riding down the highway, I'm riding down the highway, and as I go down the highway, I see uh, a, a number of different places, but one that sticks out in my mind is that when I see golden arches, when I see golden arches, there is a universal language that transcends every other. Everybody riding down the road knows what the golden arches mean. None of us would be so slow as to think that the golden arches themselves is where I eat. But the golden arches actually indicate that there is something special about those golden arches. Something special that can't be met in that billboard. But something special that that billboard says five miles ahead, golden arches. It lets me know that I can expect the benefit of what those golden arches mean in about five miles. That may be a quarter pounder with cheese, a Big Mac or filet of fish. You know what I'm talking about, a, mix, a milkshake. You see, the, the sign points to something beyond itself. The sign itself is not the end, but it leads you somewhere. So the miracles we find in John are pointing to something greater than the miracles, but to point us to believe and to know that Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. Thank God for signs. Verses one through six in this text. Let us know that Jesus cares and Jesus knows about his people. Here we have this traditional story shared the world over time immemorial. The fact of the matter is Jesus is seated up on a mountaintop. He, 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 he's seated up on a mountaintop and he sees a throng of people coming to him and his heart is cut to the quick. He begins to show how he cares for the people who are coming. Isn't it good to know that Jesus cares for us? In a world that is so ice cold and isolated, where human touch is de-emphasized for a number of reasons, it's good to know that Jesus 
cares about us. Not just us in church, but he cares about us at work and at play and at home. He cares about every part of you. There are no extras when it comes to God. He loves every part of you. Okay? This account occurs during the Passover season where the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the backdrop for the miracle that's about to be performed. Everyone say Passover. You'll be familiarized with Passover if you've ever read Exodus before. Passover involves bread made in haste. Bread that was made flat because it didn't have time to rise because they were leaving Egypt in haste. So this is John's way of letting us know that what we're about to experience in this text has something to do with bread made in haste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he drops those bombs on us every now and then, but he wants us to know that something is about to happen that involves bread made in haste. Again, Jesus is seated on the mountainside and is throng, surrounded by thousands. Jesus recognizes that the crowd is hungry. I love it. He's not so super spiritual that he does not understand and recognize the temporal need of those standing around him. The people were hungry, not just for the living word, but also for natural bread. Jesus is concerned about the needs of his people. It's amazing, young folks. Jesus had thousands of followers but was concerned about their statuses. Y'all get that after a while. Thousands of followers, not on Facebook or Twitter, thousands of followers, but was concerned about their individual statuses. He was concerned about their well-being. And I think it's a great thing when churches imitate Jesus, when we're concerned about what Jesus is concerned about. We can sometimes lose our way, but it's nothing like being reminded that we should be concerned about what Jesus is concerned about us. And not only does Jesus know of the people's need, he's also aware of the barriers that block blessings. Look at this, verses seven through nine shows that Jesus knows and exposes. Jesus knows and exposes. I, I like court TV shows. And I saw the other day where this young man was accused by the plaintiff of having stolen her pocketbook. And the young lady said, well, in the pocketbook, I had a wallet and da 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 The young man immediately answers, there was nothing in that pocketbook. <laughs> Sometimes Jesus can surgically expose what's in our mind really strategically, and he sets them up for being exposed. Jesus is, is exposing their beliefs and their doubts, the disciples. He asks them, where can we buy bread for all of these people? And, and it seems that Jesus is intensifying the problem. He's emphasizing what's missing by the question. He's setting them up. Again, what I love about Jesus is that he does not promote the denial of reality. Jesus does not give us fairy tales about life. He says, where can we find enough bread to feed all of these people? He actually brings attention to the lack. He doesn't avoid us like many of us Christians who want to basically cover for God. You don't need to cover for God. He's, he's good enough to handle any situation we deal with. So he's exposed it. Does anybody ever remember the song, Accentuate the Positive, Eliminate the Negative, Latch on to the Affirmative, but don't mess with him, Mr. In-Between? Well, Jesus is accentuating the negative. He's pumping up the negative. He's creating tension. And by this, again, he's setting them up for a miracle. Where can we buy food for all of these people? There are two responses that come. And both of these responses emphasize the lack. Philip answers saying, several months wages are not enough to buy bread for all of these people. Philip focuses on how little resources were available. Then Andrew does the same thing. He states that there is a young man, a kid with five loaves of bread and two fish, five biscuits and two sardines. And then he asked the question, but what are these among so many? <laughs> it's amazing that we often don't emphasize the fact that the hero of this passage is not all of the 5,000 grown-ups, but a little kid with lunch. 
That's why we should never ignore the, the youthful uh, capacity in our congregations because they all have something to give. But he asked the question, what are these five biscuits and two sardines amongst more than 5,000 people? And if there's ever been a question with universal application, it is the question, but what are these among so many? When faced with the challenges of life, we're often faced with, faced with bills this big and paychecks this small. What are these among so many? Church mission is big, but the tithes and the offers may be just a little small. What are these among so many? The, man, the demands of my workday are great, but my patience level is this small. What are these amongst so many? The needs of my children and family are never ending, but there's only one of me. What are these among so many? The mounds of homework, children, uh, are, are great. But between time for sports and PS5 and the Instagram, my time is limited. What are these among so many? My health is challenged. But life's challenges are growing every day. What are these among so many? I'm facing temptation on many levels and I want to be strong. But what are these among so many? It appears as though the empirical versus the miracle are at play, not only in this text, but in our lives. Empirical? What are you talking about, preacher? The empirical means that which I can see and prove with evidence. That which is in front of me that appears to be the only thing that can prove something that's real. But then the miracle is not exactly like the empirical. Because the miracle is that which I experience that defies the evidence and is beyond my own resources. So we are always faced in life with the empirical, what I see, the bills mounting up versus the miracle. Okay, let's go back at it again. The, the empirical says that I'm unemployed and I should be homeless. But the miracle is that I don't lack anything because God has kept me. All right. The empirical says that I've suffered tremendous losses in 2020 and I should be falling apart. But the miracle is that I'm still standing. The, 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 the empirical says that you've got a low credit score. But, but the miracle is, is that you got the keys to that brand new house. That's the miracle. God says the miracle versus the empirical. All right. All right. The empirical says. That my past is dark and unforgettable. But the miracle is that I was born again through Jesus Christ, my Lord. The empirical says that the doctor has the final word. But the miracle says that I'm healed in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise this morning if you're on the side of a miracle. I've heard for many years that man's inability is God's opportunity. And I want you to grab this. We, we, are, we are confronted with the empirical all the time. And that's not an accident. Sometimes God wants you to see that it is, it, it is as bad as it seems. That the situation is as dark as it appears. It's not church dark. It's real world dark. It's not saints dark. It's everybody dark. And when we see that things are just that bad, it takes our hands off the problem. And when God comes through, you will know without a shadow of a doubt that it wasn't you who brought you through, but it was God who carried you through all the way. Can I get a witness in this house today? Verses 10 through 13. God wants us again to know that the miracle is beyond your resources. And they were set up, set up. For the overflow. Anybody ever watch in, in a, a TV set or even in a play? One day I was sitting very close in a, a, a stage play, uh, The Color Purple. And I had sat on my second viewing of it near the front. And as I got closer to the front, I noticed that when the scenes were changing, I could see set hands in the back changing things, setting up for the next scene. You see, I was close enough to see that and anticipate the change that was coming next. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I believe God wants us to look really closely and sit really closely so that we can sort of detect, so we can sort of feel or anticipate the changing of the scenes in our life. I know we've been in this COVID scenario for more than a year, but guess what? Sit tight because there's some scene changes going on in the background. Unbeknownst to you, things won't be this way always, but God is setting us up for the next season of our life. In verse number 10, he tells the disciples to tell all the people, sit down, sit down. I know you'll attest that the hardest thing to do in the middle of crisis or lack is to sit down. It's counterintuitive that when things are going crazy, I'm supposed to cr go crazy with them. But here that doesn't have, Jesus says, tell the people to sit down. Maybe that's a message for us today. That before God can do his finest work in our lives, maybe we need to take a chill pill. Maybe we need to sit down for a moment to gather ourselves, to watch God do his great work. Hear me, while we're trying to figure it out, God is already worked it out. So take a seat for a moment and use the words of Christ today. Have a seat. Sit down. But I want you to grab this. Jesus tells them to sit down. But power is actually cloaked behind this translation. We see just sit down. But ladies and gentlemen, the word that Jesus used here to sit down is the Hebrew word used for sitting back at a meal and reclining. Jesus tells them basically sit back and get ready to eat. Maybe Jesus didn't get the email. There were 5,000 plus people here. And all we were working with, and for, and as far as resources goes, is five biscuits and two sardines. But Jesus says, recline, sit back and get ready to eat. <laughs> Maybe Jesus is trying to tell us that we should prepare for the miracle even before it happens. Instead of falling apart, we should be getting ready for the overflow. Instead of panicking, we should be reclining, getting ready to eat. That's right in the text. Verses 11 through 13 shows that the miracle was that God multiplied the small resources. He, 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 he provided for them. In fact, he overflowed them. He didn't just give them all just enough. But the Bible lets us know that there were 12... 12 baskets full of fragments left over. He fed thousands defying the empirical. He fed thousands and still had baskets for leftovers. When there's lack, we should be preparing for the overflow. All right, all right. Okay, maybe you don't understand. Maybe, maybe I need to push harder. Okay, there's a story of a woman. She was in a, a supermarket situation. She was buying her goods. This is not a true story. It is basically just a story that folks tell. Um, and it was so interesting to me. Uh, the woman was in line and she was waiting to buy her groceries. She had put all of her groceries on the belt. And while putting her groceries on the belt, she stood there. She stood there. And the clerk or the cashier was saying, well, ma'am, do you have the money to pay this bill? She just stood there and said, God will provide. There was a gentleman who was in back of her long was, the line was starting to really form very long behind her because she had taken so long and folks became really irate with her. So she stood there and the cashier asked her once again, ma'am, do you have the money to pay this bill? She says, God will provide. It had gotten so irritating long that the man said, you keep calling on your God, but your God has not showed up yet. The woman said, God will provide. She stayed there too long. And the man got angry, he says, your God ain't doing nothing. So he reached out his, his wallet and paid the woman's bill. After he paid the bill, he said, ha, your God didn't do nothing. The woman laughed and chuckled with her arms folded. She says, yes, he did. And he got the devil to pay the bill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we got to rely on God's promises when there's no resources in sight. 
Sometimes we got to poise ourselves confidently on God's word that he will answer even in the craziest lack situations that God will come through. There is overflow happening around us every single day. God is answering prayers, bringing people through grief, bringing people through sorrow, bringing people through poverty, bringing people through poverty of spirit and mind, through broken relationships and broken hearts. God is still doing great things and providing overflow. We got to remember we serve the God of more than enough. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and everything in it. And I want us to rest confidently on the fact that this is our father's world, our father's world, and he will provide, not just provide, but overflow you. Father, we thank you for your word because your word is powerful. It has reminded us in these few moments, God, that we can rely on on your potentiality, your plenipotentiality, God, your super abundance. Thank you, God, that we're not in the hands of all state or prudential, but we're in the hands of almighty God who knows and cares and beyond caring, you provide. Thank you, Father. We pray, almighty God, that you would remind these people, God, of how you've always kept us in the lowest of situations. And you've even brought us to where we are, God, where we can stand at last and say, God has been good to me. Carry me over hills and valleys. God, you've been good to me. More than this world could ever be. God, you've been good. And we can rely on you. And we can trust in you. And we'll have faith in you, God, from here unto eternity. Bless us all again, God, with an acknowledgement of your presence and power to get us through the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I pray that you've been blessed by the message today. And I believe that there's an invitational in order. Am I correct? Would we all stand? Perhaps there's someone in the house today after hearing from God's word. You were pricked in your heart. It'll turn in my face. And you want to turn your life over to Jesus Christ, whose hands are big enough to keep you, wide enough to hold you and not drop a thing. If there's one, we invite you to come forth and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Those who may be even on Facebook, if you could just reach your hand toward the screen and pray along with me. Pray along with me even now. Repeat after me and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I haven't lived life the way you prescribed it. To be honest, I've been crazy. I've been wasteful. But I heard that you're more than enough. You can supply all my needs, God. You can restore me and you can save me from this life of emptiness. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for my sins to wash away all my sins and God to give me eternal life through Jesus Christ I receive that gift for free today I receive that free gift and I believe today that he is the Lord of my life save me and forgive me and create in me a clean heart and give me a brand new spirit on the inside I receive it now I receive it now in Jesus name. Amen. Thank God. If you prayed that prayer with us just now, you have entered the door to the kingdom. But there is so much more. So much more. Continue to tune into these broadcasts. For you who are here, continue to come back and eat every Sunday because God is filling us up more and more and blowing our minds with his greatness. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Is my prayer. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Sooner or later, it'll turn in my favor. We thank uh, Reverend Rawls for that inspiring message. That message of hope. And we have hope. Not only in the little things, but in the big things to come. So we just praise you this morning. Thank you for 
something once again, always being a willing vessel to be used by the Lord. We just thank you this morning. So uh, I, I don't have much to say other than that. I just want to remind you that we have a meeting today at 2 o'clock. Uh, please be, uh, as Angela said, on time. Uh, she said uh, 11.50 should be taking attendance and she wanted to start at 2 o'clock. Uh, the faster you get on and the faster we get the business done, then you can have the rest of your day. So we just want you to be uh, obedient to uh, what has been said, not only in the message today, but also in the call for the meeting. So thank you again, Reverend Rawls. We appreciate you coming once again. And we hope you'll continue to come again and again and again whenever the invitation is extended. So now if you would just give us our benediction. Can we all rise to our feet? Once again, thank you again for this invitation. It is always good to be in the, con in the midst of the congregation of the First Park family. I pray that God will continue to bless you. Let's pray. Now may grace, mercy, and truth the love of God our Father, and the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, that it would rest, rule, and abide with us all, henceforth, now and forever. And God's people said, Amen. Amen and Amen. God bless. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen.